Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. Have you ever been intimidated by an inset circle? I know I was for a long time until I tried until it. I perfected it. In today's video, I'm gonna give you 15 of my best pro tips for an inset circle. For any of you wondering, this fabric is a faux patchwork fabric and it's a really fun one. I did pick it up at Hobby Lobby if anyone's interested. Faux patchworks, they make for a really interesting inset circle. People just might think that you patchwork all that and then put it into the circle, but I won't tell anybody if you don't. Enough talking already, let's jump right into this tutorial. Tip number one, Grab some freezer paper from the grocery store, but make sure that you get the plastic coated freezer paper because that's gonna work best for our inset circles. It's important to note that there is a shiny side and a dull side on our freezer paper. The dull side is where you make all your pencil marks and the shiny side is what gets ironed down onto the wrong side of your fabric. Tip number two, cut your freezer paper to the identical size of your background fabric for your inset circle. Before we can attach it though, we must first go to tip number three, which is fold your paper right in half once, and then you're going to open it back up and fold it again the other way, making that one big plus sign there in the center. And then you're going to take that folded edge and put it toward the raw edges and fold it again longwise. And then you're gonna see that middle line there. Bring the one end up to match that and give it a good finger press crease there. And then you're gonna grab the other end and bring it up to that center line. And then once you have those met up, then you're gonna just take it and fold it like a little book. And then make sure that you put your creases in there. And what this is gonna do is leave nice registration marks and guidelines for us to center our circle. Now I just grab something round, anything round, whatever size that I feel like I want that day <laughs> out of my kitchen and today it's this lid. Now after my lid is placed down onto the paper with the grid lines on it, I'm kind of looking and I'm marking there on the corners to see whereabouts I'm at. And I'm gonna even go in with my ruler and just test the top and bottom and both sides to make sure that I'm relatively, you know, in the vicinity of the center, right? And then once I think I have it, I'm gonna go ahead and take my pencil and just mark around that entire pot lid. <laughs> and I'm marking on the dull side, remember, not the shiny side. The shiny side goes onto the wrong side of our fabric. The dull side is what we write on. Next, you're just going to take your rotary cutter and get that line started so you can cut it. And you can see there, I'm just going about an inch or so. And then I dive in with my scissors and then I cut directly on that line all the way around this circle. Now we're not going to be using the center part of this freezer paper, but still save it and put it somewhere in your sewing room because you may need a smaller piece for another project sometime. Now it's time to attach this freezer paper to the wrong side or the back of our background fabric. The shiny side of the freezer paper should be touching the back of the background fabric of your quilt or quilt block. <laughs> now tip number five, you must, must use dry heat when you attach this paper onto this fabric. If you were to use steam, any wetness, it immediately lifts that freezer paper right off of that fabric immediately and it does not adhere. And then you have to kind of wait for it to dry and then use no steam again and just use the dry iron and so on and so forth. So yes, a dry iron is a must. Now on to tip number six. Make a mark about a half inch in from the edge of the paper inward toward the circle there. And what that's going to do is give you an initial guide at first to cut within that circle. So the reason for the half inch is to help us later when we have to fold that over, it gives us a lot more you know, wiggle room there instead of having such a short seam allowance where it doesn't wanna quite fold over and crease for us, this is really going to help us. Next, you're going to take your sharp pointed scissors and you're gonna make notches all the way around the entire inner part of this circle. 
And you want to make sure though that you don't go too far with your cut because that's where we're going to put a fold in the fabric where we've notched it just before that notch. Pro tip number seven, you're gonna take any glue stick, but it does have to be washable, and you're going to, on the edge of this paper, not touching the fabric, you're gonna go around one time, giving a, a good press, just one time all the way around. Cap it and set it aside. Then you're just going to take that half inch that you put those slits in, and you're going to lift it up over that paper. And you're going to wanna push it really good when you fold it over onto that glue. Now, if some of it doesn't stick, that's okay because we're going to make this fail proof here in a second. And you can see that some of mine didn't stick, but that's okay, I'm still pressing them down right onto that paper. Next, I'm bringing in that dry iron again, and I'm going to crease those little seam allowances over onto that paper. And what I'm doing for the ones that didn't stick, I'm reactivating that glue that I initially put on there. So now they will stick because they're kind of melting, right? It's easy for us sometimes to add too much glue. And that's what happens with this type of technique. Some add too much glue and then it's like a sticky, icky mess and I don't want that, so. And now just because we're going to come in again with our dry iron and we're gonna catch the top of this fabric and just very quickly, just going over it, just making sure there's no bubbles and everything is, you know, nice and flat. Next, you're going to bring in your pretty fabric. This is the fabric that will be shown in the circular shape in the quilt block. As far as measurements go for that pretty fabric, it just has to be at least a half an inch bigger than that circle. So it can be any shape really. And what I'm doing is just kind of laying it down to see what looks best within that circular shape. And when I have it where I want it, then I flip it over. So now I'm looking at the wrong side of the pretty fabric. Tip number eight is going to be your glue stick again, and you're going to just rub it right across those tabs that you just folded over. And then you're going to just take that pretty fabric and press it down onto that those tabs that you just put the glue on and just with your hand you're just going to kind of press it hard enough so that it adheres really good now this goes along with tip number eight as well and that is taking that dry heat again and running it all over that area where you put the glue and what this is going to do is adhere those two fabrics together within the seam allowance so it stays nice and tight for us. Tip number nine is to take some needle nose tweezers. And if you don't have any, I will definitely put a link down below in the description box. These I cannot live without in my sewing room. <laughs> so anyways, you're gonna take those needle nose tweezers and then you're going to lift up just like you see me doing here. And you're going to grab those little tabs up and over so that those two fabrics stay together. What you're doing is disengaging the fabric from the paper, but in doing that, we need to make sure that the little seam allowance and the pretty fabric stay together. And if you do see any spots as you're lifting up that may come undone, no worries, just grab your glue stick and put a little dab of glue right on one of the tabs and then press it together and then continue on. And you can see I do that a couple times here because, you know, they do come undone because, you know, it's not like permanent glue. It's just enough to get us through to where we can sew it together. But you're just going to keep lifting that while still maintaining that paper on the background fabric, because remember, it's still stuck. That shiny side is still stuck, or it should be, you know, sort of stuck anyway, still there. <laughs> this next pro tip is definitely one you do not want to miss, and that is taking your heat erasable pen and lifting up where the seam allowance is there on the gray fabric, and right along the edge in that crease line that you made with your iron, you're just going to mark with that pen all the way around that entire circle. Paying attention to this one pro tip will ensure that we have a very round, perfect circle in the end. Next, you're going to make sure that everything is, you know, nicely stuck together, your seam allowances, then you're gonna flip it over, just like you see me do here, and you're gonna peel that paper away gently 
and peel it right off the back of that fabric. All the while though, you're leaving those two pieces of fabric together and intact. And just as a side note, you can reuse those pieces of freezer paper, I believe like 10 or plus more times. Once you have the paper off, just glide your hands over the entire block, making sure there's no lumps and no bumps and that everything is laying nice and as flat as it can be. And then I'm gonna lift up here and show you right there is how you're going to lay that onto your sewing machine and you're going to sew directly on that line. Now for tip th number 13, this tip is that you're not going to backstitch at the beginning or the end. And I'll show you here in a minute what we're gonna do at the end. We don't wanna backstitch because we want to leave out as much bulk as you know as we can because this is such a flat circular block anything you know that is in there could cause bulk and you know and we don't want any of that so i'm just going to share with you here just how i go around and i want you to notice how i pull the left hand there the fabric up and out of the way as i go in and i do have a knee lift so that also helps but here I'm nearing the end and I wanna share with you what I do. Right there, I'm gonna show you, I just stitch right over the initial few stitches about an inch or so, and I just stop. That's it. I don't make any back stitch, no more extra thread is needed. Now you can see after this has been drugged through our feed dogs, it has some crinkling effect all along the edge there. So what you're gonna do is pull out <laughs> that steam iron now or your water or however you steam your stuff and you're going to give this a good hot press steam. We want all everything to lay as flat as it possibly can lay flat. And once you have everything nice and flat or at least as flat as it possibly can get, you're then going to open up those fabrics and expose the seam allowance and you're going to take your sharp scissors and you're gonna trim that down to a quarter inch seam allowance and you're gonna wanna go all the way around that entire seam allowance. We really don't wanna leave that half inch all the way around the entire circle because it might show through the fabric on the front and since we had to iron it or press it outward, you know, it may show a little bit but at least it'll only be a quarter inch. And of course, you know, for GP, we're gonna press it again, right? And, you know, we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna press the back side and press the front again. You know, I overpress, I'm an overpresser, I think. I don't know, it might be a problem, I don't know. <laughs> Just that easy, right? Just follow the steps and you can do it. I know you can. Take a look at your screen right now. I've handpicked videos just for you if you enjoyed today's tutorial. Go ahead, click on one of them so we can keep learning together. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.